doublespeak is using language to deliberately obscure the truth. The term was inspired by author George Orwell's dystopian 1949 novel, 1984, and is similar to two core means the government used to control individuals, doublethink and newspeak, where words and phrases were removed from language. Under the totalitarian rule of Big Brother, language is constructed in a way to limit free thought. In the face of the thought police, they cannot act collectively. For example, there is no word for bad because negative language has been removed, but there is ungood. There is also no word for science. Napoleon, the main pig in power in another of Orwell's books, 1945's novella Animal Farm, also uses doublespeak to manipulate the other animals. There'll be no more meetings, no more endless debates. From now on, a special committee of pigs will decide all aspects of the farm. When there's a food shortage, the pigs in power readjust rations, when what they really mean is reducing the amount of food the lower class pigs receive. This next example is something that many of us are familiar with, put to sleep and euthanize, which comes from the Greek word for good death. Removing the word death helps make an emotional moment like euthanasia more bearable. But what about in our food system? Doublespeak is used there probably more than you think. Meat. One of the biggest examples of doublespeak comes from the USDA itself. The Humane Slaughter Act, approved in 1958, allows the USDA to regulate its food safety and inspection services. Despite the name, the methods of slaughter described are anything but humane. Under the law, animals must be rendered insensible to pain by a single blow, or gunshot, or an electrical, chemical, or other means that is rapid and effective before being shackled, hoisted, thrown, cast, or cut. In his 1946 essay, In Front of Your Nose, Orwell wrote, We are all capable of believing things which we know to be untrue. And then, when we are finally proved wrong, impudently twisting the facts so as to show that we were right. In the Humane Slaughter Act's case, it's arguing that the method by which animals are killed is humane, but documents detailing the acceptable ways to slaughter an animal are in opposition with the word humane. The National Pork Board, a group sponsored by the USDA's marketing department, describes its methods, legal under the Humane Slaughter Act, in detail. Male piglets are castrated with a scalpel and blade. All piglets have their tails cut off with an electric tail docker. Neither method requires anesthesia. Pigs can be euthanized, a word that literally means good death, through rendering the pig unconscious, then being killed via carbon dioxide, gunshot, and captive bolts. Piglets can be killed via electrocution or blunt force trauma. The Trump administration may soon make so-called humane slaughter methods even more difficult to monitor. In September 2018, the administration introduced new regulations that would allow slaughterhouse employees to oversee inspections without being obligated to undergo any training. But some food safety and labor advocates say the new standard could jeopardize the safety of the processing plant and millions of people. We know that pork already makes hundreds of thousands of people sick every year. The new regulations would also increase line speeds in order to speed up production. Doing so could not only lead to more safety issues, but also worsen treatment for pigs. A number of meat brands market their meat as humane. Whole Foods Market, for example, has built a picturesque narrative around where its meat comes from. The supermarket stores and website shows animals living in grassy fields as part of its five-step animal welfare certification program, which it says encourages and rewards farmers and ranchers to improve their welfare practices. Its meat is also certified humane under Global Animal Protection, a nonprofit that seeks to improve farm animal welfare globally. Dairy. Many dairy brands have tried to set themselves apart as being different from traditional factory farmed milk. Fairlife, a brand of ultra-filtered milk distributed by the Coca-Cola company, uses doublespeak to portray itself as a kinder dairy brand. The brand says that it can help make the world better through the wholesome simplicity of real cow's milk. Its name, Fairlife, implies that it treats its cows well, and it works in tandem with its logo of a cow with dainty eyelashes. However, Fairlife is at the center of a potential class action lawsuit. Last June, animal rights group Animal Recovery Mission released undercover footage recorded at Fair Oaks Farms in Indiana, showing workers kicking and throwing calves. Multiple lawsuits say the brand's claims of treating its animals humanely are deceptive to consumers. Fairlife claims that individual employees are to blame for the acts. 
many retailers pulled Fairlife from the dairy aisle following the release of the undercover footage. Tillamook, an Oregon-based dairy brand, uses doublespeak to fool consumers into believing they're counteracting factory farm dairy. Last August, a complaint filed against the dairy co-op took issue with an ad stating that the company is taking on the flawed industrialized food system. In reality, two-thirds of the milk is sourced from the largest industrial dairy operation in the country, with 32,000 cows confined in a single location. But based on Tillamook's marketing, the consumer gets the idea that the milk is sourced from small, bucolic family-owned farms that treat animals well. We milk twice a day. Uh, we milk at 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It takes approximately about four hours each shift, so it's about eight hours a day of milking. All these girls have names, so they are more than just a number to us. A recent lawsuit filed against ice cream giant Ben & Jerry's makes a similar claim. Ben & Jerry's is facing a lawsuit accusing the ice cream maker of false advertising, specifically targeting the claim the milk and cream in its products come from happy cows. Cows in rolling green pastures are at the center of Ben & Jerry's marketing. According to the plaintiff, the Unilever-owned brand misleads consumers into believing its dairy comes from happy cows. The company makes it seem like all of its milk is from its Caring Dairy program, which is said to source milk from small Vermont farms labeled humane. However, only a fraction of the milk comes from Caring Dairy. The rest, the lawsuit claims, is from factory farms. Real California Milk, a campaign launched by the California Milk Advisory Board, is famous for its Happy Cows marketing. The campaign claims that good cheese comes from happy cows and implies that dairy cows raised in California are happier and treated better than factory farmed cattle. According to the website, their cows spend their time grazing, feeding, mooing, and chewing to make milk for humans, using playful language to obscure the truth of the dairy industry. We give them a nice, flat, dry, fluffy spot to lay down in every day after they return from the milking parlor. They've got feed in front of them, obviously fresh water, and then they've got a nice, dry, fluffy, comfortable bed to lie in, similar to you making your bed in the morning. The dairy industry is often viewed as kinder than the meat industry to begin with. However, it works hand in hand with the meat industry. Male calves born to dairy cows are sold off to become veal, and dairy cows are sent to slaughter after three to four years of intensive milk production. Cows rescued from the industry can live up to 20 years. Eggs Animal agriculture has also realized the benefits of using doublespeak. Take the egg industry, for example. Awareness of battery cages, where egg-laying hens are given only 67 square inches of space, denying them the space for natural behaviors like dust baths, nesting, and perching, has led to the popularity of eggs from cage-free and free-range hens. Some brands like Nellie's and Whole Foods use this in their marketing. Many major retailers such as Walmart, Kroger, Disney, Campbell's, Costco, ConAgra, White Castle, and Starbucks have all pledged to go cage-free. Applebee's, Taco Bell, and Whole Foods also use cage-free eggs. This is often leveraged to make the brand seem more ethical. For example, McDonald's pledged to go cage-free by 2025 in 2015. In a video announcing the switch, the fast food giant committed to choosing farms that are, quote, better for the birds. I'm a fourth generation farmer. Every day we strive to make a better farm, a better place for the birds. While it is progress for the egg-laying hens, going cage-free doesn't mean cruelty-free. Cage-free hens are still bred to produce more eggs than their bodies can handle, and when they're spent, they're sent to slaughter. Male chicks, considered an unprofitable byproduct of the egg industry, are ground up alive. Several hundred million male chicks are killed each year, according to animal rights group Mercy for Animals. California's Prop 12, the most progressive animal rights bill in the country, mandated cage-free conditions for egg-laying hens. Prop 12 would up that to a whole square foot of floor space starting in 2020 and then require cage-free housing two years later. Farmers could still pack birds into a building together between one and one and a half square feet per hen, but not with cages. Michigan also recently passed legislation requiring eggs sold to come from cage-free hens. Despite the rise in popularity of cage-free eggs, around 97% of hens are still raised in battery cages. These small cages typically house six birds, who have only an 8x8-inch 8 8 floor space, per guidelines set by the United Egg Group. 
Both battery cage and cage-free hens are purchased from hatcheries that slaughter male chicks in this fashion, and regardless of being in a battery cage or cage-free, both hens also have their beaks painfully burned off to prevent pecking, which they do from stress. They are both transported long distances to slaughter with no food or water, and regardless of how they were raised, all are slaughtered at less than two years old. When allowed to live, domestic chickens can live for up to 10 years. Some brands also use pasture-raised, which is supposedly even more ethical when the hens are allowed outside. But life for egg-laying hens ends the same way. Vegan eggs could eliminate the suffering of millions of hens, but the egg industry has not responded kindly to alternatives. California-based food tech brand Just first introduced Just Mayo, an egg-free mayonnaise, in 2013. At the same time, the company had also begun developing the idea for the Just Egg, a liquid egg made from mung beans. Three years later, reports revealed that the American Egg Board, an industry-funded marketing group overseen by the USDA, spent at least $59,000 to counter Just's marketing efforts. It hired a top-tier Chicago PR firm to get bloggers to make USDA-approved pro-egg posts because it perceived vegan eggs as a threat to the industry. Fish Doublespeak occurs in the fishing industry too. Most canned tuna brands have a dolphin-safe label. Although 98% of canned tuna is labeled dolphin-safe, a World Trade Organization panel has announced that the laws are protectionist. They only seek to provide cover for a handful of major brands, making real dolphin-safe tuna nearly impossible to track. Dolphin-safe standards are shaky. The rule may sound like no dolphins were harmed, but they only mean that one particular fishing method was not used in one particular part of the ocean. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, which monitors compliance with dolphin-safe labels, regulations require a written statement from the captain of a vessel stating that no fishing gear was deployed to encircle dolphins during a fishing trip where tuna were caught. It must also say that no dolphins were killed or seriously injured. Even the biggest brands may be guilty of questionable practices. Last May, consumers filed a lawsuit against Starkist, Chicken of the Sea, and Bumblebee, alleging wide-ranging and multi-layered efforts to keep consumers and federal authorities from knowing the extent of their allegedly harmful fishing practices, while continuing to use dolphin-safe labels on their products. As of December, a judge denied Bumblebee's request to have the suit dismissed. Sustainable seafood labels have come under fire, too. The Marine Stewardship Council, an international nonprofit, says that it awards fisheries its certified sustainable label if they meet certain standards for fishing practices and traceability. Whole Foods Market, Walmart, and McDonald's have committed to using only MSC certified fish. Target, Kroger, and Costco also sell fish with the MSC label. But there's a problem with the way the label is obtained. According to The Guardian, a certified sustainable rating can be too generic because it covers a wide region. So, while some vessels in a region may use more ocean-friendly fishing methods, others might use trawling, which is notorious for also capturing marine life other than the target species. The industry term for this is bycatch. The MSC system has even certified some fisheries despite evidence that the target fish populations are in trouble, or that overfishing is having a negative effect on the environment. But, consumers might see the MSC label and believe that they are buying environmentally friendly fish. The truth. It might feel like animal agriculture industries are actively working to keep consumers from knowing the truth behind how products are made. According to the Animal Legal Defense Fund, the unfortunate reality is that farmed animals receive only minimal protections under our legal system. Standard industry practices, which are sanctioned in most states, include intensive confinement, grinding up male chicks alive, tail docking, and castration without anesthesia, and forced molting, the act of starving hens to restart egg-laying cycles. While the practice is prohibited in the EU, it is still used in the US. Ensuring that slaughterhouses are carrying out only legally sanctioned violence against animals is made even more difficult than it already is under restrictive regulations dubbed ag-gag laws. According to the Animal Legal Defense Fund, these laws aim to stifle whistleblowers and undercover activists for recording footage of farm operations. The ALDF has challenged several states for introducing ag-gag laws, including North Carolina, Arkansas, and Iowa. Federal courts in Idaho and Utah have struck down ag-gag laws as unconstitutional. 
While cage-free and caring dairy paint an idealistic portrait of animal agriculture, the fact remains that an estimated 9 billion land animals are slaughtered for food annually in the United States. By using doublespeak, obscuring the truth, meat and dairy industries only seek to appeal to people's better selves while keeping the end result the same. Orwell concluded in his 1946 essay, to see what is in front of one's nose needs a constant struggle. What are some examples of doublespeak you've noticed? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. New videos every Tuesday and Friday.